How about some positive Advent joy news, some uplifting news? Could you use some of that? Me too. Winter solstice is tomorrow, and it's an especially significant one this year. Of all the holiday celebrations you may know of and I may know of, the oldest one known to humankind is the pagan celebration of the solstice. This year's winter solstice uh, is just as the summer solstice and, and the other times of year that we celebrate the change of seasons is about the time way back when, when we used to live outdoors all the time, and we were very attuned to nature's cycles and rhythms. Many of us, thankfully, are awakening to that need now and, and becoming more deliberate about reconnecting with those natural cycles. So Yule is the celebration of winter solstice, and, it, and the story goes that it is the time when the moon gave birth to the sun. Pretty magical, huh? And of course, it makes sense then that the Christians aligned Christmas on the calendar at this time when Mary, the mother of God, gives birth to the Son, S-O-N. So the two have always been inextricably linked together, the solstice and Christmas. And today I'd like to weave them back together to bring them back into their rightful connection. Winter solstice, as you may know, marks the darkest and shortest day of the year and the coming of greater light that keeps increasing all the way to summer solstice in June. And that alone, of course, is good news. But on top of it, this year, there is something really special happening called the Great Conjunction. Now, on this particular winter solstice, what happens is the two planets, Jupiter and Saturn, will come very close together. Some say that you will see it, and it may even appear as the Christmas star, like the star of Bethlehem. And it's best viewed, they say, about a half hour after sunset on solstice itself. So on Monday the 21st, about a half hour after solstice, you want to be somewhere where you can see the, the horizon. So you want to be somewhere either up high or in a flat area so that you can, can view that if you wish. The editors of the Old Farmer's Almanac talk about it, and they say that Saturn, Saturn and Jupiter will actually be closer to one another than they've been since Galileo's time in 1623. That sounds pretty epic to me, that alone. This time, we'll look for that Christmas star just like the one that the Eastern astrologers known as the Magi followed to the birth of Jesus. The intuitive astrologer in modern times, Dr. Christine Page, says that the 2020 winter solstice in the, is the meeting of expansive energy of Jupiter and the focused structured energy of Saturn. And she says it's an early Aquarius bringing us new hope for community-centered consciousness. I mean, we've been trying to pray, we have, not trying, we have been praying that in, affirming that, knowing that, donning our unity masks, talking about moving toward this kind of more unified understanding of one another and moving together forward in our country and in our world. So we've got all these energies now present for us to really move into that, that true breaking of the new light. Uh, so this is exciting news. We might actually be leaving the darker times of 2020, at least gradually, if not fully. So I don't know about you, but I'm ready. <laughs> I think we all are. As we keep moving forward then to this greater light of solstice and the rebirth of Christmas, we have this amazing week in, in store for us, really. As, as we arrive at Christmas Day, we come bearing the gifts that we have gathered along the Advent journey. So remember, we started with faith, and some call it hope. We tend to go to faith, a stronger expression of hope, but hope is a part of that too. And then peace and love, and today now we move to joy, emergent joy, that joy that is coming forth out of this special conjunction that's happening. At Christmas, as you know, we celebrate the holy birth, but it's not just that, that outer birth of Mary burying Jesus and the consciousness that he brought to the world. It's more about the inner 
Christ that is born in all of us. It's more about that energy being acknowledged and rising up in our conscious awareness once again. So you could think of this great conjunction as kind of a cosmic sky dance, right? So the conjunction has to happen in order for the birth to happen, the great conception, if you will. So there will be this dance, this cosmic dance going on, this closeness of planets, this look of a Christmas star, the, the star that is, is followed with great hope and great joy. And then the birth that happens in all of us, the reawakening that happens across our planet to those who, as Jesus would say, have ears to hear, who are willing, who are engaged, who are open. And I know that means all of you who are listening today. So as we move and, and practice and, and open ourselves to this light, this emergent joy that comes with it, let's look at these two energies. We'll take them one at a time and then put them back together to see what is really here for us, what is being offered to us at this auspicious time, at the same time these planets are dancing in the sky. So the expansive energy, the energy that Dr. Christine Page talks about as, as the energy of Jupiter, what is expansive energy? If you think about it, right, you think of, well, the cosmos, right? It's that broad, starry sky kind of energy. It's the magic um, of, of, look, of beholding a night sky and the, and the crescent moon for, or all of the things that, that kind of bring us that sense of awe. And so it's the, the allness of God it, and, and how we touch that allness, the mystery of spirit. It's the dreams and the visions. It's all of that energy is what opens us up, expands us, fills us with hope and joy and possibility and expectancy. So we're getting a good lesson in expansiveness during 2020. If I could sum up the lesson, I would say it is make friends with uncertainty. That's a part of expansive energy, is to really, to allow ourselves to embrace the very state of not knowing itself. Now, this is something we tend to dance around and avoid because it's the unknown, right? <laughs> and so what's the unknown? It scares us. We're not sure. It's dark in there. We're, we're not sure what we're going to bump into. But it is allowing ourselves to just sit with it, to be with it, and especially now in these final days of this darkness, to really be with it as then the light can really burst forth in a whole different way with a kind of different um, awareness for us when we are allowing that darkness to be there too, allowing that unknown. Because it's not static emptiness. What we find when we move into it, when we say yes to it, when we embrace uncertainty and the unknown is, is curiosity, amazing discoveries, things that we wouldn't see otherwise if we just try to go around. And so if we allow ourselves to move in, there's a sense of openness and courage and vulnerability within ourselves that begins to get tapped. We've not been taught this way, so it feels counter to the ways that we're taught in our outer world. You know, the, the world is so full of distraction that keeps us, you know, look over here at this shiny thing and this shiny thing and this thing to make you more and better. And yet there is this, this beauty right here inside. Embracing what we don't know comes naturally to children. You know how children just, I mean, they don't know a lot of things. They're learning about their world. And so they embrace it with a kind of curiosity and wonder. A constant knowing, wondering about the unknown allows them to unearth and learn about something and allow it to come known into their consciousness. And this is that time of year where that childlike joy gets stirred in us. It's, it's really the week of the child, isn't it? That, that inner child for those of us who are grown up and, and the time for, for actual children to really let that joy come forward. And part of it is, is this expansive energy, this curious energy, this sense of wonderment. So hopefully, as we grow through the ages, we don't leave wonderment behind. And if we do, if we find ourselves feeling kind of flat and without any kind of sense of spirit or magic, 
You know, many people are experiencing that because Christmas is different this year, or the holidays in general are different for them, maybe not seeing family and so on. And so there might be some sadness. But that is the energy of the universe calling to us to go within. That is the energy of the universe offering us a gift like none other we've ever had. And it may not look like a gift and it may not feel like a gift and we may want to push it away. But if instead we will unwrap it and be with it, there will be some great awakening there for us. Joy was built in to that sense of wonder. It's naturally a part of it. You know, um, Grace has, our goddaughter Grace has this favorite, it's not just a toy, it's her comfort. His name is Dirty Bear. We have a picture of Grace there with Dirty Bear. She's had Dirty Bear since she was born. And uh, actually when she, when, when the bear arrived, his name wasn't Dirty Bear. He got called Dirty Bear as he got dirtier because he went everywhere with her. <laughs> <laughs> on every walk, at every place, you know, as you can imagine, as a toddler, he got really dirty. So when she was four years old, she lost Dirty Bear. And, I mean, he is truly her emotional comfort, so it was a really big loss. It's like Linus losing his blankie, you know? And so mom or grandma, somebody got a new bear, but of course it was Clean Bear. But then over time, Clean Bear became Dirty Bear. But still to this day, she's now seven, almost eight, she talks about the original dirty bear that got lost. And this year for Christmas, it's the only thing that she wanted was dirty bear. And somebody in the family said, oh, that's going to be pretty hard for Santa to find dirty bear at this point. And she said, Santa can do anything. And it's that kind of belief in the magic and the spirit of Christmas that, that rekindled for us joy. You know that God is Santa dynamic, it's always been a little intriguing. Have you noticed that? It's like, is Santa God? Because it sort of seems like, in a way, that that's how it plays out. But if you think about how we move through the stages of belief, there's actually a pretty good parallel between how we go with Santa and how we go with God. So when we are children, we tend to have faith, right? Just a, an innocent belief in, in Santa, right? In, this, in this, the whole story of Santa Claus, the magic of Santa Claus coming on Christmas Eve and leaving the presents and all, all, all that happens as a part of Santa Claus, right? So we believe that Santa is jolly and he embodies a sort of spirit of generosity and joy and he's very far away. He's bigger than us. He's bigger than we can imagine, right? bigger than anybody we know. And then as we age, as we go through uh, our, our lives, we become teens and, and older children, and you know it's not cool to perceive, be perceived as gullible amongst our peers. And so we, we move into a more practical you know, kind of way of believing, and we let go of that silly stuff from childhood, right? So we don't believe anymore. We don't believe that there's an actual Santa Claus. But then at some point, we, we might actually realize that we didn't fully lose the spirit of it. In fact, many become parents or as adults become Santa Claus themselves, right? So over time, we ourselves then embody the magic of Santa itself. And it's the same process for our spiritual journey. We may start out with a sort of innocent belief, a childlike kind of understanding of a God that is bigger than us and that is far away and that knows all and can do all. And then we might at some point on our journey begin to question that belief or this idea of a benevolent entity or a benevolent ener universal energy even. You know, we might get down to brass tacks of life and the practicalities of life, or we might just simply not think about God much. It just sort of recedes and we're, we're really focused on the physical realm. But at some point, we begin to awaken again to the spirit of the divine in us. We begin to awaken to this idea of something greater than us and maybe something that we're a part of. In fact, like Santa Claus, we become it. We become the embodiment of that divine spirit. And so what greater joy can there be than to become that which we have stood in awe of, 
to be a part of an inextricably linked, melded essence of a bringer of joy, like Santa, like God, like the very divine spirit that we are. So this is the mighty gift of joy, the realization of who we are and what we have to offer through us and as us. The mighty gift is a song written by Ricky Byers and Dedra Francois was willing to learn it for us today. Let's watch. I wanted to share this beautiful song by Ricky Byers. It's called A Mighty Gift of Joy because it truly is a blessing and a gift to be with you today. Trusting the gift within, trusting the love I know, I step with sweeter faith into the world I go. Time enough, time enough to bring a mighty, mighty gift of joy. Move from the gift within, move from the love you know, and step with greater faith. So how much mystery and uncertainty have you allowed in your life? Contemplate that and see if maybe you can bring that up a little bit more. Welcome a little bit more of the unknown. And what assumptions or outright refusals might you be working with to believe in the possibilities, the potential? Those things will stand in our way if we're making assumptions, getting too practical too soon before we allow the expansive energy to really t take hold in its fullness. And as we expand the possibilities and the belief of what can be, we make friends with uncertainty. We enter that life of dreams and visions and wonderment, a magical place to be. And once we've expanded our consciousness into the mystery of spirit, we are ready to let the divine now take form. 
And that's when Saturn comes in, that conjunction, that structure, that place to allow spirit to have form. So, you know, that magical, mysterious, mystical place, it's a really fun place to hang out, right? <laughs> and some of us love it so much that we sort of go off into airy fairyland, and you know for yourself or others who maybe isn't sort of got their feet on the ground, right? <laughs> And so that's why we need Saturn, so we can then put our feet on the ground. Or as Kelly Hunt, the blues singer, says, she's a New Thought blues singer, if that seems sort of like a contradiction, but it does seem to go together for her. Anyway, what she sings is, gravity loves you, baby. And it's a reminder that that magnetic pull of the earth keeps us humble, it keeps us connected, it keeps us a little more practical as well. It allows us to have some structure so that that which we want to bring forth from the invisible to the visible, from heaven to earth, can take form, can be known to us, and not just something that's floating out in the cosmic sky. So it may seem a little... Uh, ho-hum instead of ho-ho-ho, this kind of energy, this, this structured, focused Saturn kind of energy, the more practical side. But it, it is sacred too. So the mundane and the sacred, they're whole, aren't they? Just as the physical and the spiritual are whole, as we know ourselves to be divine human beings. It's the two opposites coming into that great conjunction together to birth exactly what we need and how we can experience it, put our hands around it and our minds around it as earthly beings as well as spiritual beings. So one of the ways we can do this, especially now, is through the focus aspect of Saturn. In the Native American shamanic tradition, there is a, a way that a teacher chooses their, those who will be apprenticed to the teacher, especially in the art of plant medicine. So what the teacher says when they've gathered together all the students is here's your first test. Find as many sacred plants as you can find in the next hour. This is a way that the teacher weeds out the ones that they want to keep as their potential apprentices. Because the ones who go far away, who begin to scatter to the different directions, are not the ones they choose. It's the ones who look down beneath their feet and see the plants that are growing right there. It's that kind of present awareness that is called in, in this focus aspect of Saturn, especially right now. So we bring the divine to life by literally standing on holy ground in the here and the now, being present to what is here at any given moment. And like I said before, in the world of distraction, that can be hard. But with the, the energies that the pandemic have brought of, of pulling us further within, of staying at home to the extent that we are able, there is a greater sense, a greater um, for lack of a better term, I'll just keep saying energy because it is an energy that, that helps us to stay present, to stay focused, to stay in the now. So our keen skills of observation within and without will bring a deeper awareness that we have everything we need right here, right now. There will be structures to come. Things will co-create. Things that will make in order to bring forth innovative possibilities through that expansive place of divine ideas that Jupiter offers for us. But we'll need a vehicle. We'll need ways. And that will come down the line. I believe here and now we're still in the here and now. Here and now we're still about focus, about presence, at least at this moment in time. The creativity that will burst, burst forth will come. But right now, the questions we can ask ourselves is, what is the collective energy right now? What, do I, what can I um, tune into? What can I feel that's happening in the collective? What's going on inside of my own heart right now? This is something we can ask ourselves throughout the day, both of these questions, as well as, look, what's right beneath my feet? holy ground? What's here? What joyful surprises might await me 
right here in this present moment that I'll miss if I'm allowing myself to continue to be distracted all the time. Mary symbolizes the aspect of us that is receptive to this holy invitation. She's receptive to new life. She's receptive to the mighty gift of joy. Mary makes space for the seed of joy to be planted and to grow within her. And there is a Mary in us. It's the Mary in us, that metaphysical understanding of all the characters of this great Christmas story, which we'll get to experience more on Christmas Eve. Mary is, is the one who reminds us of this, that we, if we remain open and receptive and willing, that this, can be, this joy can be seated in us and can come forth. So as we birth ourselves, essentially, this Christmas, it is with our feet planted firmly on earth, firmly on the ground, and knowing that we belong to earth, that this is the place where we are needed. This is the place where the gifts of the divine are needed most. We don't have to look very far to see that. So that mighty gift of joy is one that we both receive and then we share with the world. That Christmas carol, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, has been going through my mind lately. Um, and it's got a really kind of a haunting melody to it. The words seem sort of arcane, but actually as I looked at them, I thought, wow, there's some, some things here that really feel appropriate for 2020. As we happily kick the darker times of 2020 to the curb, you know, there's also a sense of, of the welcoming in, and both of these are present in this song. It's those expansive spiritual spaces that are filled with possibilities of, dream, of dreams. God is with us there. That's what Emmanuel means. And God is with us in the structure we create, in the focus, in the present here and now. So O come, oh come, oh come, Emmanuel is a call for God to be revealed, to be revealed through us and as us, to become more visible and more visceral, to be deeply felt and known. So the lyrics go like this, or this is just a couple of the verses that I found that, that felt to me to be really parallel with 2020. Come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows put to fight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. O come, O come, and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on high and close the path to misery. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. It's time for that divine revelation to happen. The light is coming, and a deeper sense of knowing is opening up in us as this great conjunction, conjunction happens in the sky. It also happens in our consciousness. And will we heed the lessons of 2020? Can we make friends with uncertainty? And can we be fully present focused on the here and the now. It will benefit us greatly as we will move forward in the next year into greater co-creative possibilities. Let's not get ahead of ourselves because that time won't be as rich if we do. You are cosmically expansive. Did you know that? It's pretty cool to think of, isn't it? And you are also fully grounded on the earth. You may already know that. Both are needed, though, to receive this mighty gift of emergent joy. Aren't we ready for it? O come, O come, Emmanuel. O come, emergent joy. Let it be revealed in us and through us and as us. Let's know this together. Let's affirm this together. And let's enter that childlike joy with one another throughout this, this whole week and into Christmas. So I invite you to affirm this with me now. Together, I am cosmically expansive and fully grounded on earth. Oh, come through me, emergent joy. Hooray. <laughs> Bless you.